Hey guys, welcome back to another video where we have spent the last three months restoring this Volkswagen Razorback. We live full time on the road in our girl Olive and we are usually traveling the UK and Europe, but we have been in one spot in Tavistock giving this girl a new life. In fact, we were saving her from the scrapyard. Guys, look at her. She is incredible. A little bit dirty here and there because we have just driven up onto the moors, but oh my God, she is amazing to drive. The looks we get from everyone is just incredible. I'm a proud little cookie of us both right now. We've worked so hard the last three, four months, put a lot of love into this van, like we do with anything we've done. We always put our love into it. Just how we transformed Olive from a minibus to our home on wheels. We've saved this beauty from the scrapyard. Let's share with you guys what she actually is. I know she's an unusual looking van, so let's explain what she is. She is a Volkswagen Razorback. You may not have seen many Razorbacks like this. They usually have a top on it as well, but Chris wanted to turn her into a pickup truck. The unique selling point of a Volkswagen Razorback is they all have a hydraulic floor system, which means that the floor of this van can go right to the floor. I must admit, I really wasn't sure when Chris said that he was gonna hack the top of the roof of this van off and turn it into a pickup truck, but I must admit, she looks pretty epic. In last week's video, you saw me really struggling with these back doors. They have been the bane of my life for about the last three or four weeks. Still trying to perfect it at the moment. As you can see, I haven't quite colored this bar here. It is held on by a cable tie at the moment just to keep the lock down. So I'm still thinking of a new way to come up with keeping these doors shut, but still look smart. I'm so pleased we did reuse the original door steel. They do look amazing now, but they pushed me to my absolute skill limit. There was some welding I had to do. I had to treat a lot of rust, filling in different bits. I had to make up new backs for the doors so they look really smart. Yeah, they have pushed me to my wits end. But as I said, we are almost there. Finishing touches and these doors will be looking amazing. Do I look silly in my back? PJs. No, not at all. You're just gonna have to live with me in my PJs. Yeah. <laughs> she looks all messy. I want. I envisioned this video for her just being like pristine and clean, but we have just drove her across the moors, and uh, it's a wet day in England, and she's just really minging. But anyway, look how good her paintwork is. Everyone that sees it in person is like that does not look like you hand rolled it. It has come up so nice. And I don't know if you remember guys, but we had to really take our time on this bodywork. Chris had to learn how to fiberglass for the first time ever. We had to do so much fillering and sanding, but she looks pretty brand new and that hard work was worth it. Although she needs another clean. I have learned a lot about engines doing this van. The van was running, but... <laughs> Excuse me. Cows, trying to interrupt it. If it's not Fletcher interrupting it, it's the bloody cows. Come on, buddy, find your friends. <laughs> your friends are there, you're over there, come across the road and we'll be all right. We'll get on with this, all right? <laughs> God. Anyway, as I was saying, I've learned a lot about the engine on this van. Luckily, I have had a T4 before, so I do know them a little bit, but I've learned so much. Changing the air filter, fuel filter, and can I say the fuel filter on this one, 20 times easier than on our Olive. Oh my God. Uh, oil filter, oil change, literally everything has been redone that I physically can do. So when she drives now, she's amazing. It feels so good, you know? So, so nice and good to drive. Brilliant. Pulling like a train, baby. 
It's actually a bigger engine than our original T4. It's a 2.5 109 engine instead of the 89, I think our old one was. So anything that's included in a service kit has been done on this van. It's gonna be hard to let it go. Where are we going today? Oh, I could go anywhere in this baby. She is so comfortable. <laughs> oh, I just love her. So you're probably wondering how this vehicle even came into our lives. So let's take you back right to the start. This has been my boyhood dream, this van. No, genuinely, guys, I think I've manifested this van into my life because this was a workshop vehicle. This used to be used by my old man. We used to carry around big machines for the companies who we used to work for, moving around big, big machinery, so it was perfect having that floor going up and down. And then one thing after another, a few things started going wrong, and it wasn't used as much, so they stored her under the bridge, out the workshop, and unfortunately, she sat there to rot for almost seven years. Now bearing in mind, whenever we return from any of our trips when we've been traveling around in Olive, we go back and live in this workshop area. So we have always watched her get greener <laughs> and just start looking rather sorry for herself. And then the day arrived when Chris approached me with his puppy dog eyes. <laughs> and he was like, can we please spend a couple of months on this new project? Bearing in mind that couple of months turned into almost four. But it was so, so worth it. We learned a lot from it. I think Fletcher was really afraid that we were just gonna go off and leave him because he's been sat <laughs> in okay, Olive. We're all here, don't worry, don't worry. Say hello to the vlog, Fletch. Say hi team. In our last video, we mentioned that we were trying to get this Razorback finished for taking her to a Volkswagen festival. And I would like to report that we did make it to the festival. Not leaving quite early enough. We planned to leave at like 9 a.m. in the morning. We didn't leave until like half past 11, did we? I just spoke about the doors being a pain in my life. We drove out of the workshop, and as soon as I drove out, the doors sprung open. I was like, oh my God, we are not destined to go to this show. <laughs> so that's when the cable tie <laughs> idea came in. Cable tied them shut. And yeah, it's, uh, we, we got there, didn't we? It we was a there. bit of a miracle that we made it. But if we're honest, it wasn't really the festival that we thought it was going to be. No. We thought it was going to be a Volkswagen festival where there'd be an opportunity to be able to show her off, let people have a look at her. But it wasn't really like that. It was just all about the live music. It was like stuff. the come down festival of the year. It was like the final festival of the year. Even like the traders and things like that, they come here just to chill out really, let their hair down and just enjoy a festival with their families. I think... Um, really, it would have been perfect if we went to the ones throughout the summer. That would have been brilliant. Right? Yeah, absolutely. So but... we might have to keep her till next summer, and then <laughs> Let, let's talk about let's talk about what's next for this Razorback. Not not much. I'm keeping it. <laughs> I don't know what I don't know what you what I don't know what you mean. I must admit, guys, we've been driving around in her for the last week and a half now, and I absolutely love her. Every time we park her up and I look back at her, I'm just like, oh my God. We did this. She looks unreal. And their heads, we turn when we're yeah. driving her, like she attracts a lot of attention. So let us know in the comments, what would you do? Would you sell her or would you keep her? Benefits for both. I really want to keep her. <laughs> I know. I really want to keep her. I know. I think we're just going to have to let fate decide. Yes, because so, yeah. at the end of the day, the Razorbacks are a unique vehicle. Not everybody is going to be looking for a vehicle like this, where it's got a hydraulic system. She's a special gal. She so is very special, yeah. Let's just wait and see whether someone snaps her up or we're destined to keep her. Well, if we keep her, it's a nice uh, van to have when we come back in it for those three months. I know. Or for when we got our cabin or when we got our bit of land. It's a nice, put our planks of wood in the back for when we're building what we want to build. Could be perfect, babe. Could be perfect. It could be. So that leads us on nicely to what is next? For... What is next for the travel duo? But I think it would be fair if we include Olive in that conversation so let's go and get her involved let's do it 
So for you guys who are wondering who or what Olive is, Olive is actually our home on wheels. She is an LT35 X minibus, which we converted into our home that we live in full time. We have spent so long on the Razorback now that we're starting to feel like we're neglecting Olive a little bit. She really does need some TLC herself before our next big adventure. But we're just gonna cook up some nibbles now. We're starving. So let's do that and then we'll sit down and share what the next plans are. You can never wait, can ya? Mmm, mmm, mmm. What is that like? Bulba. So we got some prosciattos, we got some teriyaki tofu, some padron peppers, corn on the cob, and we're just warming up some flatbreads, and I think we're about there, but you're not waiting for anybody, <clears throat> are ya? Mm -mm. <laughs> so, what is next for the travel duo? Not sell the razor bag. We're actually, guys, going to Florida in three weeks' time with my family, <clears throat> my nephews, my parents, and my brother and sister in law, which is going to be really lovely. So, we've got two weeks away from Fletcher. Flesh is going to be at my mum's, so if you're watching this mum, thanks for having him. I'm not sure how he's going to be. Hopefully good as gold, a little good angel. Luck. And enjoy him in your bed. <laughs> so we're off to Florida like we said, but our big main trip will be kicking off in February 2024. We will be heading up to Scandinavia. We cannot wait to visit Sweden, Norway, Finland, Denmark, it's going to be epic, isn't it? It's literally been the trip of our dreams yeah. ever since living on the road and it's been why we started it. I don't really, know why it's it? taken us so long though, to know. actually do it. I don't know why we haven't done it like before. I think it's been the times of year and the Schengen. Yeah, I think we, we were put off, someone said like the summers are so busy or something like that, didn't it, as well? And more the dogs, you couldn't really take the dogs off yeah. lead. And we really wanted to see it in the snow, didn't we? Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like, like, that's why you go up there, like they have some wicked, harsh, but wicked winters. So we're really, really, or I am definitely really, really excited to see that. Mm -hmm. So the next series of uh, our YouTube channel will be about prepping Olive for that. We'll have to upgrade quite a few things, make sure she's really, really well insulated. Um, we've been getting a lot of tips from other YouTube channels, from people who have been up there, which is great. Uh, we've in talks with new battery companies and things like that. So literally she has having like a full makeover, isn't she really? And she really needs it. She does. Because... Yeah, we've we've neglected her recently. She's even filthy. We need to give her a good wash. Yeah. And yeah, I can't wait to start focusing on her again and just getting her ready for a trip of a lifetime. Oh, it's going to be amazing. Mm -hmm. So we just know that our next big trip is in February. And between now and then, we need to get her prepped. And we're going to go on a few cheeky adventures in between because... We're missing adventures on Oh, we can't stay in the same place. Like, this is... The last month, guys, I'm not going to lie, we've really struggled. Mm -hmm. Like, mentally, physically, it's been so hard. It's been nice to have a little bit of routine, like, going to the gym and things like that, but just being in one place all the time, it's not why we chose this life. It's not why we chose van life. We wanted to be moving all the time. So, I would never say I regret doing the Razorback, but there are times where I'm like, maybe I shouldn't have done it. So yeah, it's a very like 50-50, 60-40 sort of touch. It? It's just got us a bit uncomfortable, but I Absolutely. definitely think she's been so worth it. Mm. I know it's been a dream of yours to do. Yeah. And we've learned a lot on the way, and my God, wasn't it worth it? Oh, 100%. She, looks, yeah. she insane. looks insane, yeah. She looks unbelievable. So I don't regret it. Like you say, it did get us very uncomfortable yep. just because we're living in one same spot in a tiny van, and that's just not the life we chose, but... It's definitely, um, it was definitely worth it. It was. And on that note, I feel like I'm eating very politely because the camera's on. So that's the end of this week's video. I hope you guys all really, really enjoyed it. I'm going to get on and tuck in with this food. So as we're ending it on some food, if you've got this far, put like the little pasta dish one or any sort of food. food. <clears throat> yeah, any sort of food. Stick it on there. And yeah. 
please let us know what you think of this Razorback. Yeah, we would love to meet you in the comments, talk about it, and yeah, just get chatting with you guys. We love the community we've built here, don't we? Yeah, and thank you for your support and your words of encouragement, because trust me, it was very needed <laughs> at times. We appreciate you so, so much. Let's get ready for Norway. We'll see you soon. See ya!